Uh, we move to next session, and for that, I have moderators Dr. Vishal Poptani, Dr. Anil Jain, and Dr. Nitin Jain. Uh, and I have chairpersons Dr. Swati Garikar, Dr. Tushar Gajar, and Dr. Tarun Parmar. We have a case on pediatrics. Over to chairperson to introduce the speakers and the case, and then the debate. Over to chair Dr. Swati. Dr. Swati Garikar or Dr. Tushar Gajar, please introduce the speakers and then we can have the case presentation, uh, case discussion. Yes. yes uh, I'm, yeah. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. All right. So, uh, pleasure being here. Good evening to all of you. We have Dr. Bhavik Champaneri from the prestigious UN Mehta Institute, Ahmedabad talking about uh, the case today of a 10-year-old with a BSD and his perspective on things. Dr. Bhavik. Yeah, so can I share my slides? Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, so is slides visible? Hello? Yeah. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm thankful to the committee of Cardiocon uh, for giving me this opportunity. So the case which has been given to me is basically a 10 year old female uh, who is having exertional fatigue, uh, fatigue season in NYHA class two. She's having a grade four by six systolic murmur and she's diagnosed to have a, a perimembranous VSD, which is measuring around four mm in diameter and which is uh, away from aorta six mm uh, in length. She is having a mild pulmonary arterial hypertension and QP by QS calculated is somewhere around 2.1 is to 1. So uh, looking at this data which has been provided, there is no doubt that this patient requires some sort of intervention. Uh, it can be either a uh, transcatheter device closer or it can be surgical closer. But being a pediatric cardiologist, I will always uh, prefer uh, transcatheter intervention because overall looking at the data, it looks like a straightforward case for a device closer. So my strategy would be to do transcatheter VSD device closer in this patient and my device selection would be 64 ADO2 that's an amplitzer duct occluder. Uh, second, my approach would be arterial because uh, it's relatively easier. You don't have to make arteriovenous loop and you can finish uh, this device closer within I would say 15-20 minutes of time. So, uh, uh, so first of all, uh, I don't have doubt on capabilities of our surgeon, Dr. Mishra. Uh, and I would say uh, it's beyond a point. It's proven that sur uh, surgical VSD closure is very safe procedure, very effective, and it can be done without any uh, complication as well. So my focus would be uh, how I will be justifying my procedure uh, would be on few advantages, which I will focus uh, over the surgical VSD closure. And one more thing I would, uh, uh, I have to confess that any uh, cardiologist or any pediatric cardiologist who is doing intervention, he becomes more and more confident and he becomes more aggressive if you have a surgical backup like Amit Misra, sir. So I have to uh, uh, give respect to uh, surgeons as well because they increase our courage and they increase our aggression. So coming to the uh, case. So what 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 is what are the advantages of transcatheter VSD device closer? So first and uh, foremost, we will avoid sternotomy by doing transcatheter VSD device closer. We will avoid cardiopulmonary bypass by doing transcatheter device. It will have a short ICU and hospital stay. It will have less ICU complication because anyways child is going to stay less in ICU. It will have a less psychological issues. So I have actually uh, focused more on psychological aspects of uh, surgery, having a scar on body rather than uh, uh, listing the demerits of surgery because uh, anyway, surgery is proven uh, to be very effective. So I would focus more on a psychological aspects uh, of uh, having a surgery versus transcatheter device closure. And first is a sternotomy scar. So actually, once you do sternotomy, that scar is going to have with you for your lifetime and no one has given thought how uh, that scar is going to affect his day-to-day -day life or various domains of life. And this is the study uh, uh, where I, which I have come across where they have studied the uh, effect or significance of sonotomy scar. It was a questionnaire based study, 100 patients were included in the study. All were adults above 18 years of age. 
53 were male and 47 were female. So on asking question, nearly 60% felt that uh, having a scar affected their life during adolescence period. So 60% of patients told that adolescents, they were very much conscious and they were, it was affecting significantly to have a scar on their chest. 60% felt their body has been disfigured by having a sternal scar. 50% of population feels that they want to conceal the scar. So that again uh, uh, shows uh, how uh, mental, uh, mental trauma or I would say what is the psychological impact of having a scar on them. Attention uh, to the scar by other people. 19% felt that they have they are having a negative impact on, on, on attention to the scar. Nearly 60% felt they are not feeling anything to that. And actually 23% had a positive effect. They were feeling positive to have a scar on the chest. There was no effect of uh, having a scar on choice of their career, success in life, friendship, sexual life, etc. Coming to uh, cardiopulmonary bypass complications, there are pl plenty of complications which has been described and various reasons for that. But with over a period of time, with newer strategies, CTV strategies, complication has overall come down significantly. And nowadays, we don't see much of complication. But I, if I, I, I would say that majority of uh, cardiologists, cardiac surgeon, and intensivists sees a complications which is related to cardiopulmonary bypass. And we come across very frequently a cases where you, you have a renal dysfunction or liver dysfunction post cardiopulmonary bypass. Often it improves over a period of time, but it accounts for some morbidity and increase in your ICU and hospital stay. Uh, coming to psychological impact, this is an important paper published in Cardiology in the Young, where they have actually studied what is the psychological impact of having a surgery and what is psychological impact of having a device closure. And in this study, they assess and compare the behavioral and emotional outcomes after surgery or transcatheter closure of VSD device. Actually, it was again a, uh, a checklist was given to parents about child's behavior. And another 28 item question have was also given to assess parents' psychological stress, which they are undergoing after surgery or after device closure. 29 patients were in a uh, surgical group and 35 patients were in a uh, device group. The results was behavioral problems were greater in both the groups when it was compared to normative data or normal population. But when you compare between the surgical and device group, the depression and somatic complaints were higher in patients who have undergone surgery and risk factors which were found to be significant were young age at repair to have a sternal scar, atrioventricular block, maternal anxiety, etc. So uh, this is again, it's, it, it focuses that psychological trauma after surgery is uh, 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 relatively on a higher side as compared to transcatheter device closure. Uh, what is data on comparing uh, the VSD device versus VSD surgical closure? And this is a, a randomized control trial which I have come across, which was published in JAK in 2014, where they have actually compared uh, in a randomized manner percutaneous per uh, per VSD device versus VSD surgery. Actually, they uh, after analyzing 465 patients, totally 101 patients were analyzed who were having uh, transcatheter device closure and 99 patients underwent surgical closure. And if you look at the chart, both the groups were actually age matched, weight matched. So there was no discrepancy. Actually, manifestations were also more or less similar. Echocardiographic data and invasive data were also not significantly different. They were more or less similar. So they wanted to... Uh, have two groups which are more or less in a similar aspect. But if we look at the procedural details, blood transfusion requirement was significantly higher in patients who underwent surgical group. Procedural duration, if we look, which was very high in patients who have undergone surgical group. Hospital and ICU stay obviously was higher in patients with a surgical group. Most important thing was time to return to normal activities. So this is very important in uh, current scenario. Uh, that time to return to normal activities was significantly higher. That was somewhere around 18 days in, in a surgical group while patients with device closure uh, were normal after three to four days of procedure. When we are looking at major adverse events, uh, there is no difference between surgery and uh, transcatheter group. Minor adverse events, they found that surgical group was having a significantly increased uh, risk of minor adverse events, but they included actually blood transfusion as a minor event. So if we remove this blood transfusion, there was again no, not much of difference between surgical and transcatheter group. 
you can see here arrhythmias were also more or less similar in both the groups uh, this is another uh, uh, study which i have come across it's a systematic review uh, published in cat cvi in 2015 uh, total 3300 patients uh, were enrolled in the study device patients were around 1300 surgical patients were around 1800 Success rate when they, it was compared between surgery and device group, it was more or less similar with a p-value of 0.67. Major complication they included death, reoperation, uh, permanent pacemaker implantation for heart block, and there was no significant difference between these two groups. The residual stunt again, which was significant, was again not. Uh, uh, it was similar in both the groups with p-value of 0.41. Aortic regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation, they also found to have similar in both the groups. Need for blood transfusion and hospital stay was higher in patients with surgical group. Uh, what is Indian data? How, uh, so I have taken four case series, which are the largest case series of uh, published from India. The first one is from UN Meta, having a, a, a case series of four, 430 patients. Dr. Nageshwara is from Hyderabad, Dr. Jairangnathan from Bangalore, and Dr. Parat Talvi from Mumbai. And if you see the number, it's a quite a good number uh, published before 2012. Uh, and uh, the majority of patients undergoing VSD device were perimembranous VSD device closure. And if you look at the success rate, it is very high, more than 98% in majority of series. And if you look at the incidence of hard block post uh, procedure, uh, it comes to less than 1%, or I would say around 1%, and risk of embolization was somewhere around 1%. Uh, on follow-up, they didn't have any patient with complete heart block uh, with nearly three to four years of follow-up and residual strength was also not very significant in uh, follow-up. Uh, so I would, I, would, I would like to have a case example similar to the case provided to me. It's an eight-year-old female. She's having five to six mm of perimembranous VSD and aortic rim of seven mm. This is an echo picture. You can see LLV is dilated. This is a perimembranous VSD measuring six mm. And aortic rim is around 7 mm. Patient has been taken into cath lab. She underwent integrated venous approach device closure uh, using 10-8 ADO1, that's an amplexer duct occluder 1. Uh, post procedure angio suggesting no significant residual flow. This is a post procedure eco picture showing mild or trivial TR and device in good position with no residual flow. Similar 14 year old female, she is also uh, diagnosed to have moderate perimembranous VSD, but she is having a severe tricuspid regurgitation because of indirect hair bone. Uh, actually, patient was referred for surgery. On evaluation, we found to have moderate perimembranous VSD and significant TR, as you can see here. Uh, patient was taken into cath lab, she underwent device closure with a 10 8 ADO1 device, and TR has come down significantly with eventual uh, uh, TR remaining mild. Device in good position, no aortic regurgitation, no residual flow across device. So this, I wanted to highlight another case. So uh, it's not always surgeon who is bailing out uh, uh, cardiologists. Cardiologists are also there bailing out surgeons. So this is another case, 12-year-old uh, male patient who has underwent intracardiac repair for tetralogy of fellow and he's coming back after, uh, after six to eight months with severe pulmonary atrial hypertension, right ventricular dysfunction, severe uh, and uh, residual VSD of around 9 mm. After discussion with surgeon, patient was taken into cath lab. He underwent VSD device closure with a 12 mm muscular VSD. Uh, no, 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 no. Time is up. You try to conclude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just finishing. Yeah. 12 mm muscular device. Patient did well. Uh, and he's uh, two years post-procedure follow-up. He's doing well. So coming to the conclusion, if we are selecting cases very carefully, intervention is superior to surgery. If we look at in terms of cosmetic results, psychological outcome, financial result as well, hospital IC stay, blood transfusion requirement. Transcatheter intervention is non-inferior to surgery in terms of major and minor complications. So I would like my child to have a normal chest without scar as compared to a scarred chest. Thank you. And I will uh, look forward to Dr. Amit Misra sir for his uh, uh, explanation towards surgery. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bhavik. Very enlightening. Let's now look at what Dr. Amit Mishra has to say. He's a senior pediatric cardiac surgeon, also from UN Meta. 
डॉक्टर मिश्रा थैंक यू सो आई थिंक द डिटेल्स ऑफ द पेशेंट एंड मोस्ट ऑफ द एडवांटेजेस ऑफ डिवाइस आर ऑलरेडी कवर्ड बाई डॉक्टर भाविक एंड ही इज ऑलरेडी कवर्ड फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ माई थिंग्स डिबेट शुड बी देयर as we get to see lot of variety of the cases variety of the vsds and all that there is always some controversy whether it can be done better in a device or it can be done surgically being a surgeon i always think that it can be it's a simple thing can be done on the surgically but no doubt no doubt surgery is not not free from uh, any side effects or complication because surgery is surgery lot of people are involved anesthetists are involved heart lung machine is involved <laughs> pre operative post operative anatrop icu care blood all these things are involved so if if a good job can be done in bio intervention cardiologist we have no harm we absolutely no harm like in this patient 10 year girl 4 mm vst 2 is to 1 shunt no subaortic membrane no right ventricular outflow tech obstruction i i i think that in a 10 years old girl with a restrictive vst for so many years there must be some fibrosis in right ventricular outflow tech possibility of same there is a possibility that right coronary cusp is prolapsing and maybe that that this is the tricuspid valve uh, is obstructing the vsd that is possible but having said that the case is different what we are discussing now and honestly honestly speaking we hardly see such case we hardly see such a clean case for vsd closure because the cardiologists are gatekeeper they will finish and you don't even know that such patient is admitted or gone home unless there is some problem then only we are in picture otherwise for such cases we are not been called out now catheter management adio and this is the first time i was going through adio 1 2 3 and uh, avp 2 they are not yet i recently saw in the article i don't remember the year which it is published but they are not yet us fda approved and device closure is recommended as whenever you have a 2 to 3 mm rim just below the, below the aortic annulus now uh, device has its own complications there is a higher incidence of arrhythmia we don't see so many arrhythmias in a clean vsd closure like this there is a very high incidence of complete heart block if you go by surgery there's less than 2% especially if the experts are there then less than 1% incidence of heart block right bundle left bundle branch block and there is a very high almost 3.2% incidence of the permanent pacemaker implantation other there can be a traumatic injury to the tricuspid valve aortic valve ar is there ar is most of the time it is progressive once the ar is developed or you injure the aortic valve there is a fair chances that ar is going to progress over a period of time then we also get a residual vsd especially if it is at the junction with the tricuspid valve there is a possibility of 1 mm vsd residual vsd can be there but most of the time it should heal so devices also have a incidence of the 5 to 6% uh, incidence of the uh, residual vsd then there is a pos- possibility of uh, iatrogenic embolization it may go to any place once it is you have in, uh, left the device it may go into aorta into pulmonary artery or into branch pulmonary arteries anywhere and cost is of course a major factor devices are are expensive one more thing which i was going through the article there is no long term study which has shown what is the status of left ventricular outflow tract especially after 5 years or 10 years of device because these are a nitilol mesh there is a endothelialization and that that endothelial portion is going to come in the left ventricular outflow tract so how it is going to behave over a period of time that we don't know when we put a patch it is on the rv side only and it is just thin less than 1 mm diameter of the patch 0.4 mm in fact so the left ventricular outflow tract is not a question in vsd surgical closure so this i am not sure how the uh, in the coming time this left ventricular outflow tract issue will be there and how the patient will be behaving in the coming time especially the post device closure because you are close to two valves and the left ventricular outflow tract then this is one of the article we have published few years back i still remember that patient he was a small 8 to 10 years old child from the rajasthan and uh, he had vsd ps in fact there was a ps also so they did the balloon dilatation of the pulmonary stenosis and did the device closure of the perimembranous vsd incidentally this device is slipped into the arch but the cardiologist was so aggressive that he has pulled back the device and put it again into the perimembranous vsd 
and after four years four hours i got a call the devices embolized back into the arch so in emergency i have to go back and i have to remove this device it was just in front of the innominate artery and you can see the device is quite large it can obstruct both innominate as well as the carotid artery can have major disasters so devices are not free from the complication this is what i believe i've done few more cases but this i could this is we have published so i could immediately retrieve all these things so this is we will retrieve the device and see last device in a 8 year old child from the ascending aorta then i would like to conclude here that please do it devices we um, we all are working basically for the patients whenever it is safe please do it and the best part you people have you always have a surgeon on your phone call so if you if you are any mess we are there we are there you know but you will not come and rescue the yeah, of course you have shown the examples that you are coil embolizing resveratrol vsd this that's a joint effort no doubt but you know if some if there is a surgical bleeding there's nobody you are the only one or maybe glue that's all these are the two things which you are going to help so and uh, i personally believe we can close this kind of vsd and we can retrieve also if it is required from here there we are well versed with the i told you if the surgeon is experienced there's less than 1% chances i believe i don't know exactly what is my result but less than 1% chances of heart loss in there and we can avoid injury to the aortic valve trichus especially if the surgeon is experienced this least chances of tricuspid valve injury or aortic valve injury or if there tiny pfo that will also be closed if there is small pda that is also will be taken care so all these things are complementary when you are doing this thank you thank you very much i think i am in time <coughs> any questions thank you is is dr tushar there my co chairs or the moderator so just one thing you told that it's not us fda approved but most of the device you told are us fda approved i have seen in the article yeah but lvot uh, actually uh, it's never a concern because uh, no one nowhere uh, uh, anyone has found to have lvot unless it's a very much oversized device usually on call off also we haven't come across a single case where lvot o is a concern no, but it's still it's a long term it's a long term there are there are article which says that there is a nitrolol disc lying on, on the lv side of the vsd Yes, yes, it lies definitely. So thin, thin subaortic membrane gives you the gradient. Yes. If this fibrous tissue keep increasing, there is a possibility. I am just saying that this is there is a possibility that these things can can occur in the future. I am not saying this will happen, but there is a possibility. You may see these things in the coming future. And you are close to two valves: tricuspid, aortic, conduction. All the all the area around the VSD is surrounded with the problem, but it's still. you go and put it we don't mind in muscular vsd and all that you please do it and as i said earlier please do it we are there don't worry in the last case which i uh, posted post uh, surgical that was for my uh, safety i was sure you are going to jump on something so i had to show that case <laughs> is it my case i don't remember this patient <laughs> i think it's a great discussion on this uh, simple case uh, it's good to have this such simple case for surgeon uh, but i think cardiology should do this case uh, uh, very nicely i have few points to say uh, as a surgeon being a surgeon i would like to say that many a times uh, straight forward vsd as dr mishra has already mentioned they have severed uh, they have non obstructive subaortic membrane which you might have missed on the echo you have missed many a times such patients going into gasolization which is not producing even ps they have bundles in the rvot they have additional pda and most of the time such simple case but there are a lot of cord crossing there and your device is hanging in between and you are damaging the tricuspid valve so we have retrieved such cases uh, such devices on uh, such simpler cases uh, coming to the point of scar i uh, think 10 year old can be done such simple vst can be done through minimal invasive vst closure through thoracotomy is it possible that is also a possibility so uh, given a point if it is a really straightforward case no cord crossing across device is best but yes long term results are required for the uh, knowing the lvot obstruction because our patch even causes uh, some amount of uh, 
fibrosis on the LV side and leads to subarachnoid membrane later on and produces LV obstruction. And when this such big disc is prolapsing into the LV OT, it is going to produce LV OT obstruction in future. Probably it may come up after few. More years and then we'll see retrieving device and putting a patch again. No, it is horrible. It is horrible. And to it's going to be horrible. It will be a nightmare for us. It, it is just not possible. Then it will cause damage to the aortic wall as well as it will cause conduction damage. You will try. You will not get such case, sir. We we uh, pray to God no, that you, it should not come. Because, but uh, we are just predicting the possibility. Unless the predicting problems, yes. problems will come, we can't comment anything. Yes. Okay. That's a nice discussion. Thank you both Thank of you. you. Thank you, sir. Tarun bhai, you wanted to say something. Nice discussion and uh, very nice psychological aspect uh, bring uh, on by the Bhavik Chapaneri. Uh, we do not, you know, uh, uh, very much uh, concern about those things. We are very much into the intervention and surgery, but the psychological aspect is very important. And as Dr. Mishra said, like uh, being very aggressive uh, on every every intervention and every VSD to do device closure. Like the, in this case, uh, like uh, there is six millimeter of margin is there, but sometimes uh, uh, intervention cardiologists become so aggressive because of availability of the surgeon that there are chances of AR. And uh, when we do the uh, device closure from the aortic valve, so because of the cable and everything, we cannot judge properly. Uh, before releasing the thing. So any degree of AR, it will increase in the future and all. So tricuspid valve involvement and other associated lesion always go for the surgery. But otherwise, if this is, the, I mean, straightforward, pretty straight, straightforward case for the device closure. Otherwise, uh, one need to, you know, uh, properly evaluate the case and then accordingly decide. Very nice. Uh, my question to all of you, 10-year-old uh, presenting 2.2, I think Dr. Mishra pointed it out. UPQS, quantification, would it matter whether it's echocardiographic, invasive? Uh, again, uh, European guidelines are more strict for perimembranous because of the CHB and the rhythm disturbances and the subsequent LV dysfunction for devices. American guidelines, though they are not FDA approved for the devices per se, as Dr. Mishra pointed out, but are more liberal in terms of doing uh, devices. So comments from all the chairs and uh, uh, panelists. I think we have, yeah, sorry, sorry, ma'am, continue. No, please go ahead, Dr. Bhavik. I think we have enough data from Indian series as well, sir. We have actually 2012 before, 2014. Problem is in India, we don't publish. Yeah. No, it's the publish guideline, what I'm telling, sir. Publish. Yeah, the guidelines sir. still don't call perimembranous into class one, as far as I know. I mean, yeah, you can yeah. clarify. It's a class two A indication for perimembranous. Yes, true, sir. But still, that guideline will change over a period of experience. Yeah, we'll see. Agreed. So, um, uh, if I may add, uh, it's very clear that the way for a PDA, it's standard of care that transcatheter is one. It's not true for a perimembranous VSD. It is not. So, I don't know if Dr. Kamal had me on as a chair purposefully. I'm a non-interventional pediatric cardiologist and perhaps I have a unique perspective because of that. I believe that the most important aspect here is patient selection, number one. I feel all patients uh, pre-intervention or pre-surgery need to have the feedback from both the cardiologist and the surgeon. The surgeon should know that such and such patient is going to the cath lab. And uh, I think I think that's where the whole thing lies. I think uh, once it's decided it's a transcatheter uh, procedure, then everything should be straightforward because your whole strategy should be you know sorted out. Uh, I would also say that follow up is vital, whether you do it surgically or you do it in the cath lab. Follow up one year, five years, ten years later is vital, and. Uh, um, I, I think as long as we remember that, you know, whether a surgeon or a cardiologist, we are working for the patient, I think everything falls in place. Thank you. Thank you all, both of you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Swati, Dr. Tushar, Dr. Tarun, Dr. Anil, Dr. Vishal, Dr. Nitin Jain. Uh, yes, and both the speakers, Dr. Bhavik and Dr. Amit, you did wonderful. Uh, thank you, Kamal. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, very well organized. Thank you for being here. Yeah, for the time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.